Welcome to very rainy and quite cold Sussex for another video episode on the HE140i. Plan for today is to get some more power out of it. So we've been running this car for a little while now with Pure 800 Turbo, uh, B58TU fuel pump, various supporting modifications, and it's done really quite well. We suspect power figures in the high 500s, but haven't really tested it on a dyno, but we're having problems when we try and flow ethanol through it, where we need to flow quite a bit more of that fuel the high pressure fuel pump isn't keeping up. So we're essentially leaving a lot on the table, which is where this little package of goodies comes in. So plan for today, the, uh, the sort of headline item is the Dorch DS25 fuel pump. So this is a new, well, essentially an updated version of the Dorch Stage 2, which is always the go-to fuel pump. So Dorch have given it better flow along with a few updates to the kit. So it now all fits without having to remove the fuel lines every time you want to do spark plugs, which is a nice little addition because that was a little bit of a pain with the old kit. But yeah, some quite significant flow increases. Maybe see how much ethanol we can flow through it with you know, decent power. It'd be nice to flow a nice high percentage on there. So that's that, along with the, the fitting kit that comes with it. So you've got new fuel lines, fitting sort of bracket or mounting bracket. So it's all nice. You know, we've used those kits plenty before. This first DS25 we've done, but the Dorch Stage 2 kits have always been really good. And then we've got the latest part number, Bosch injectors. We've seen a few with injector problems. I mean, I don't think it's quite as common as the internet might have you believe, <laughs> but it's not worth risking, especially when we're asking more and more of them. And we've also seen these later part numbers seem to get a little bit more power for whatever reason. Yeah, whether they're just a slightly better spray pattern or flow. And then the final thing is just spark plugs while we're in there, just gonna change them. And hopefully that nice little package will give us a big increase in power. So hopefully, especially with some ethanol in it, we can really get into the 600s. We're limited by standard internals, so we're not gonna ask too much of it. But yeah, this should, <laughs> should make this car an absolute monster, to be honest, it's already quick enough, but when power's this easy, it's kind of difficult to say no. So Andy's going to crack on with fitting it all, and then we'll catch up afterwards. Here we are, Andy has installed the new Dorch DS25 pump yesterday, so someone's got to finish the job. Um, he's also installed the uh, high pressure baited line to the rear of the engine, which uh, is the feed for the pump, replacing the uh, restrictive, quite, quite a small diameter BMW line. Um, we've got our injectors and rails back in, which has been quite a straightforward job, but there's a couple of special tools you need for setting up and removing the injectors. And we're just getting to the point now of renewing the pipe for the new Dorch feed line from the high pressure pump to the injectors. So we've got our standard one, then we've got our Dorch one. Uh, they're pretty similar, it's just a couple of the uh, angles are a little bit different to allow it to couple up to the pump. So we're going to get that done um, and then we're on to spark plugs. Right, we've got our high pressure feed lines for the rails installed um, and the three unions torque to spec. We've just removed our old spark plugs and we've got five of them here. We've got some new ones. Uh, these are, they're the exact same NGK Iridium models. Um, we're just renewing them because these have had a lot of time on track and dyno. We're, we've gapped the new ones, so we're gonna get these installed. Um, and then we can uh, adapt the new injectors to the DME and uh, fire it up with the covers off, make sure there's no leaks and um, put it back together. Yeah. 
here we are, we've got everything installed now, new plugs, fuel pump, rails, everything's back together apart from trims. We've got our auto diagnostic machine here, we need to reset our fuel adaption values. So I've been into powertrain, carried out that procedure, we now need to start the engine, allow it to run for two minutes, make sure there's no fault codes or leaks, so I will get it started. It's been a couple of weeks since we installed the Dorch pump, which is nestled under there, you can't see it under the engine covers. And that's given us a bit of time just to get the mapping um, sort of up to spec, really. On pump fuel, it's nothing too madly different from the TU pump, but we can push a little bit harder. But really, where the Dorch will really shine is when we start getting some ethanol into this car, which we're yet to do. But regardless, it'd be good to take it for a drive. We have, although the mapping's not hugely different, it is actually a completely new map that we've started from scratch with this. All via Boot Mod 3 again to make sure we can use the, uh, the flex fuel element of it. And they've already got built-in tables for the Dorch DS25 pump. So it is all quite nice and straightforward. And with the Pure 800 Turbo on ethanol, this thing's gonna be an absolute monster. As it is, it's a bit of a cold day. I've only got pump fuel in it, but it drives really nicely and it is not slow, so let's um, let's go out for a drive and you can see what it's like. Uh, the Dorch kits are, as I mentioned before, really complete kits, which are great. I've seen various other botched high-pressure fuel pump upgrades, which, yeah, sure, you've saved a bit of money, but actually you're risking harm to your engine, you know, let alone fire risk and all sorts, where, whereas you know, everything with that Dorch pump is really high quality. Yeah, they're the first ones on the sort of mass market with upgraded high pressure fuel pumps and yeah they remain the the number one name really um, first impressions driving after fitting the pump are good in that there's no real difference which is great obviously we where we where you can put in the fuel pump on boom mod 3 we could very easily tell the car has got the pump there wasn't any initial problems with setting that up um, it worked straight away and we've gone away from the map that was on the car previously and we've actually started afresh it's just been so easy that like everything's worked from the off and then we've obviously just been pushing it in terms of ignition timing and boost and, and whatnot uh, as you've seen the install of the Dorch pump um, itself obviously we bundled it into a bit of a job of injectors and spark plugs but the install of the Dorch pump itself is relatively straightforward the kit comes complete with everything you need to fit it very easily it's all very nicely made yeah, even the fuel pipe has a, a little billet clamp for it and um, you get all the tools to align the fuel pump perfectly. And the good thing about DS25, as I mentioned before, is that unlike its predecessor, the DS2, it doesn't block access to the spark plugs, so you don't have to have the fuel pump um, pipes out or anything like that. So really straightforward. I mean, in essence, it's two bolts and some pipes. We use special torque wrench attachments to make sure we can torque the fuel line so we know they're absolutely bang on things like that but you know in essence a very simple process and if you are running boot mod 3 there's also a drop down for it so you can tweak your map very easily without any major work we've obviously then built on that where we've got the pure 800 and that fuel pump we are running a completely custom map and we've got it to a point where on pump fuel it's really really nice and smooth um, i think we've got a bit of an improvement over the previous map with the tu pump but there's nothing mad on on pump fuel uh, i think it's quite a common misconception really that this pump will you know you bolt it on and off you go you've got 700 odd horsepower that's not entirely true because your limit with pump fuel is the octane rating not the flow so as we start adding ethanol to this, that's where it will really shine. Um, with a TU pump, as soon as we we're up to sort of E20, we just weren't getting enough fuel pressure where that, that pump was running out of flow. You need about 30% more ethanol than you do petrol to get the same air fuel ratio, or the correct air fuel ratio, I should say. So we were really held back by the TU pump. Uh, whereas now we've got so much capability to hopefully get some decent E numbers in it, um, you know, E50 and beyond with any luck and it'll make some big power. For now, this thing has got more than enough power on pump fuel. It's really quite alarming, to be honest, <laughs> and a bit of a handful, but, but very good fun. And yeah, just going back to everything being plug and play, everything drives like standard, really, until you put your foot down, which is really nice. It doesn't drive like a modified car, which, you know, isn't always what you want when you're just jumping in a car and going for a drive. 
Uh, to summarise, the Dodge fuel pump fits really nicely, really nice quality part, really easy to work with software wise thanks to Boom Mod 3. We're really happy with it and I really can't wait to see what advantage it gives us with some ethanol fueling but we'll catch up with you at some point in the near future and see what this does on a dyno.